no role plays, just real. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. We've never really, as a workforce, spent a lot of time on making sure we're developing good leaders. We'll be able to share stories, experience, mistakes, uh, failures, successes. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, two weeks ago, our episode number 204, we talked about apprehension of a post-pandemic world. And we got a lot of great feedback on that episode because we talked about a lot of the things that were going to be going away, things that we we think are never going to come back. And that feedback that we got led us to start this five-part series, which we started last week, on the things that we believe are never going to change, the timeless things that we think COVID can't kill, basically. Last Monday, we talked about how the fact that people People will always need to feel a connection to their leaders and to their organizations. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about how people will always need to know that their organization shares their values. And I think this is equally as important as feeling connected. I think it it might even lead to a a, a stronger feeling of connection. Um, But I have worked for organizations where I thought the values were shared, and then I saw some things and realized that they weren't shared, or maybe they just changed. Maybe they were shared and then they they changed. Uh, How big a deal is it, do you think, for employees to feel like their personal values are shared with their organization? I I think it's going to be a big, big deal. Like I, I think over time... You know, people w- will take a job uh, for th- for the job itself or for like the title of the position. I think a lot of people that, you know, are in certain industries, if you're, you know, if you're an engineer, what matters is that you do a job of an engineer sure. and that you, you know, you, you find some work that you enjoy doing. If it's your electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, things like that. And I think what we're seeing right now. Uh, and we have kind of seen is now this shift to say it's no longer just about the ability to do that job, but I kind of want to know and feel good about who I do that job for. Mm-hmm. And and you know, you and I we've talked about this over you know over the years of the podcast, but this idea of you know what what are the values and again uh, defined for the organization by people that lead the organization. Sure. Like I, I it doesn't can, matter I, what's I, in the employee handbook. Exactly. Right. Doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's it's always remembering that. That it's it's always a reflection of leadership. There's been fantastically re- great companies that have had values and that they've printed on the wall and people knew them, and and the company and the leaders of the company lived those values and it was a great place and a great opportunity. And then something would happen and there would be a change of the guard and there would be a different maybe a CEO of that organization. And now all of a sudden it feels like these values are being questioned and, and it's not the same as it was. And of course, like there should always be change and change is the only constant. And there should always be evolution and progression but at the end of the day let's not forget that it's those leaders in organizations that that actually live by and role model and you know talk about the values of the organization um, or those leaders that do not do it so I, I think that as uh, as as people consider where they want to work they're going to do a lot more thinking about the not just the values of the organization, but do they actually live them? Can you show me proof? Don't just tell me that you believe this because a lot of organizations have a lot of overlap from a value standpoint, but which ones are actually doing them? And it reminds me a little bit of the conversation um, I was having with uh, Dan uh, Cockrell a couple of uh, weeks ago, you know, in the episode that we put out for the roundtable. And he was just talking about the value structure at Disney and, and how it's so strong. And he would say like, we, 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 and you know, speaking about how they would do things at Disney when I was asking him directly, like what his thoughts were on these things, but it's so ingrained from the, the top levels all the way through from a leadership organization that they don't just talk about these things, but they live these things and, and they all, you know, represent those behaviors of the organization. So I think that it's just going to be more and more important um, that, that, that leaders of organizations think about that and do a lot more to entice people to come over by leading through their values. Yeah, I agree. I, I think you touched on something there that kind of uh, resonated with me a little bit when you talked about how you know a, a leadership change could happen and then all of a sudden the values, whatever the values were, aren't as important anymore. And I got thinking like, you know, I've never been in an organization where a leadership change happened and the person came in and said, hey, this thing right here that we said was important, that's no longer important anymore. And, and, and so I thought, okay, well, if that doesn't happen, then what does happen? And what I, what I think comes down to is just a matter of prioritization. And so anybody can can say, I want you to uh, name your top 10 values. Okay, well, these are my top 10 values. All right, but if you had to put, push comes to shove, 
give them two of those values and ask them which one's more important. At some point, the actions are going to tell you which one is more important. So when a leadership change happens, I don't think it's necessarily that something becomes not important anymore verbally or that it gets taken down off the wall. I think for values to live, they rely on the individual one-off actions that collectively define what the values are. And so what happens is when those individual one-off actions stop happening, over time, that particular value, whatever it is, starts slowly dropping down the priorities list. If you see 100 examples a day of that value in action, that's probably the number one value. If you see one a day, maybe it's still on the list. Maybe it's still a value of the organization, but it's not number one anymore. And if you stop seeing any, really, or they're sporadic, or from just one or two people, that's when you realize that it's not a value of the organization. It's a value of those particular people, but they don't necessarily work for an organization that is aligned with those. And so I, that, the, the reason why I think that's important to call out is that it's insidious when it changes. You could, you could find yourself like the old adage of if you put a frog in boiling water, it jumps out. But if you just turn on the heat, it'll, it'll die because it doesn't realize that it's heating up. This is the exact same thing. I don't see values just turn on a dime very often. I see them die slowly and then people wake up and go, what happened to this organization and then they start to rationalize well I've, I'm already here I've been here for a while and then you find yourself working for an organization for a long time that doesn't share your values yeah well first of all no uh, frogs were harmed in the recording of the Hacking Leadership <laughs> podcast um, but yeah no, I, I agree with that and I think it's something that one of my mentors and the leader that I look up to quite a bit says quite often which is that leaders vote with their time mm-hmm. how and where you spend time as a leader is actually how you show people what your priorities are and so, uh, you know, to your point is that if you have a changing of leadership and this new leader or this different leader spends their time doing different things, it's not this intent of we're going to get away from that or we're no longer caring about that or those values aren't important. It's just that their behaviors are now sending kind of this messaging through and cascading through the organization that these other things are now more important. Um, and, and that can be something that can break culture and, and restructure culture. And, and I think you even have some organizations where it's, it's you know, it, let's use the pandemic as an example. If you have an organization that because of what's going on, now all of a sudden maybe has to lay people off, has to furlough people, has to, has to reorganize the organization, potentially maybe has to, you know, Chapter 11 bankruptcy, who knows? But, but you have to do things just to survive. And now you have to have a leader come in there and say, like, these are the things that have to happen for our just the survival of our organization. Well, I think they're probably going to spend their time differently. Right. Um, and that doesn't, make it, that doesn't necessarily make them a bad leader. That doesn't mean they don't care about values. It doesn't mean they don't care about people. It just means as a result of the situation, they now have to spend their time differently. But if that, is, if, if that time is spent differently for too long or you don't circle back around again to making sure that even in a different space of action and behavior, your values aren't at the core of what you're doing and how you make these decisions that's where you can find yourself in a lot of type of, in a lot of trouble and i think that that's something that leaders right now have to consider from the macro to the micro if, I, if i'm if i'm a leader of a, of a team and we're going through change whether it's changing into the virtual world or we're, we're maybe the this, this the team is downsizing or maybe it's just shifting responsibility because the way that we used to do things in the physical world we can no longer do it so now we have to do something differently if the leader is is caught up in so much of that change and spending their time differently, but not holding on to those core values and bringing them up and making sure that they talk about them, that can cause a lot of trouble in in the short term and the long term. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I want to be clear about something. I you, you mentioned something about it doesn't mean that the leader doesn't have values. It, I think everybody has values. Every everybody does. It, it, the question is whether or not they are aligned with your values, whether or not your leader's values and your organization's values are aligned with yours. Because I promise you, your leader has values and your organization has values. Um, a, a perfect example with, of this would be there, there are people who love the values of the military. They, they love that it is completely hierarchical. They love that there is a, they, they know the path of what the next step is. There's a, a little bit less ambiguity in, in order to move up. There's this kind of, this really reliable structure for the, for the most of it. And, and there are some people who would not thrive in an environment like that. 
because their values don't align with that. It doesn't make one better than the other. It means that some people are a fit and some people are not a fit. And so uh, be, be careful if you're sitting here listening to this thinking, my company doesn't share my values. That doesn't mean your company's wrong. It might mean that you are wrong for that organization. It might mean the organization is wrong for you. But but there is this isn't a good versus evil thing here, unless your company really is doing you know evil things. <laughs> um, but but for the most part, if an organization is around and they've been around for a little bit and they have people working for them, you, you know you're not working for the evil empire here. This is the this is an organization who's trying to do good. They have their set of values and you have your set of values. It's just really important that you know that you can't do your best work unless your values align. And if you find yourself in an organization where you don't share their values, you're you're not going to be doing your best work, you're not going to be fully engaged, you're not going to move up. Um there's a lot that there's a lot of baggage that comes along with it. And so that's why I think people will will need to know that their organization shares their values because they will put more into their job if they feel that way. They they want to get better, they want to succeed. Like realistically what we're saying here isn't that they want their organization to have good values, it's that they want to be working towards something they care about. Yeah, and and I think it's a great point in aligning with those values and I like what you said about the kind of the example of that it's not right or wrong, but it's just a matter of fit. So like I know a couple of software engineers, right? People that just love developing things. And there are two camps of software engineers, okay? There's the ones that are like, I want to work for a small to medium-sized business. I want to work nine to five Monday through Friday. I want to do what I got to do in an office, make sure things are good to go, you know, uh, handle these types of things, turn on my assignments, work on these projects, turn them all in, you know, slow and steady and constantly working on improvements and that type of thing. But it's like, it's a very kind of a, a very structured way of life and you know kind of what you're looking for. Then there's the other camp of software engineers and they are like, Oh, no, 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 no. Like, we always work. And, and like, we want to put in, like, put us on salary. I still want to put in 80 hours a week. Like, I'm not leaving. We're not leaving until this project is done. If we got to order pizza, if we got to pull an all nighter, we don't care because what we value is this type of high pressure, high boiling point, work as much as we can. This is our life. If we get uh, an hour to like play some video games and talk about work, then that's good for us. But like all we actually want to do is work, 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 because that's actually what we love. And this is how much we enjoy this type of an environment. And again, not that they're right or wrong. It's just two different types of values on the job itself and how the company sees the job and quite honestly, how the cultures within those organizations have defined what the values are. Because if you if you move those 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 software engineers from one camp to the other, they hate it. Yeah. And, and, it, and it could be the greatest company in the world and it could be the most awesome CEO and it could be the we save the world and we do this and like we do that. But if you take that software engineer who wants to be like late night, lock us down, we don't care, we get this work done. I want a team of people that are like constantly pushing, constantly debating, how do we get better? And you put them in an office nine to five. Where it's like, you know, uh, somebody's birthday party and everything stops for four hours so we can cut a cake and put hats on. Like, they're going to lose their damn mind. Right. And I think the reason why this is important to talk about is because every organization has objectives that are, you know, performance-based. So if you if you have a job as a, as a leader, you're, you have to have your people do certain things. There are things you have to hold them accountable to. There are objectives that they have to get done. Every day, a person who is asked to get done something goes through a usually subconscious, but sometimes very conscious process of deciding whether or not what they're being asked to do aligns with their own personal values. Like, am I, am I having to sacrifice something of myself that I hold dear in order to do something that I'm being asked to do? It could be something very consequential, like being asked to dump hazardous waste down the drain, and I don't like that morally, and now I'm, that's, a, that's a big one. Or it could be much smaller, like I'm being asked to, to work 80 hours a week for the next three weeks, and I know that I have a family at home who wants me there too, and I'm having to struggle to figure out whether or not I can do this or if I want to do this or not. So, so the, the, it can run the gamut of what you're being asked to do in terms of an organizational objective. If a person's personal values 
align with those organizational objectives, you will never get anything but the best output from that person. Whatever you're asking them to do, if it aligns with what they see themselves as, what they hold dear to them, you're going to get the great output. When it's at, at when it's at odds with their personal values, when they butt heads, that's when you don't get great output. And so as a leader, it behooves you to make sure that the personal values of your people, that you, A, know what they are, definitely know what they are, help them articulate them if they don't know what they are, or if they can articulate them, know them, and try to align the things they're being asked to do with those objectives, with those personal values, your objectives and their personal values. If you can't do that, if you're having to really struggle to do it, they might not be a fit for the organization. If you're having to kind of think outside the box and come up with stretch assignments and figuring out accommodations to kind of help them get involved, then maybe they are a fit and maybe they'll be able to make some great contributions. That's something every leader is going to have to decide on their own at what's worth it and what's what's it worth going through with each person. But I promise you what's the wrong thing to do is to keep trying to shove that square peg into the round hole, trying to get people to do things that don't align with their values because either A, you don't know what they are or B, you know what they are and you know they don't align because you're, you're just going to get poor work. No, I think it's a great point. So let me ask you this question then. So if, if you're considering an organization that maybe you want to work for or you're through the interview process, and again, I think that there, we're going to see a lot of that. I think we're going to see a lot of people that are going to shift you know, companies, shift organizations, potentially shift industries and careers sure. um, out of this whole pandemic. So if I'm going through that interview process, um, what am I asking or what am I looking for or what am I trying to see that may give me a better sense of will I align with the values of the organization outside of here's what we print. But sure. like as I'm talking to people and considering the culture of the environment, what should I be asking or looking for that would help me make that decision? First of all, I've always believed, and this is, this is much easier said than done because I think a lot of people, when they're searching for a job, it's out of necessity. They're searching for a job because they, they don't want to be where they are or they don't, they don't, or they have, don't have one. one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it's always yeah. best to go through a job search process from a standpoint of, if it doesn't work out, I'm happy where I am. That, that'd be great. Because then, because the best way to figure out whether or not your values align with the organization is to go into the interview process, not needing the job, and then you're more likely to be yourself. Because if you're just being yourself and you can feel free to talk about your values and what's important to you in the interview process, the organization will select you out if they don't think you align with their values. So that's a great lit litmus test for it right now. Again, unfortunately, if you're unemployed and need a job, or if you can't stand your job and you need to go somewhere, I think a lot of people have a very difficult time being themselves in those interview processes. They're gonna try to you know, put on the dog and pony show and put their best foot forward and say what they think the person wants them to hear. So if you're in that situation, the questions that you ask are gonna become very important too. Questions like, why do you like working here? Tell me what you like about working here and see what they, how they answer the question. If they answer it based on the work that they're doing, that's a different answer than they answer it based on how they can bring the best selves to work, how that's had gr the great work-life balance, how what they want to do and the values of themselves align with the organization. If they're speaking like that, then chances are you're, you're making at least a safer bet. Cool. And with that, it brings us to this episode's One Minute Hack. The One Minute Hack. All right, for this episode's One Minute Hack, if you're a leader and you're trying to make sure that your people have values that align with yours and with your organizations, and you're worried about whether or not you're getting their best output, their best engagement, their best productivity, because you're questioning whether or not the things they're being asked to do, the organizational objectives, aren't aligning with their values, the first thing you need to do is one-on-one, -on -one, talk to them, and find out what they value. Ask them flat out, what do you value? What is important to you? And, and not just within the context of the organization, in the context of their life. Get into a conversation about what they hold dear and then find a way to put the things you're asking them to do into the context of those values. If you're having a really difficult time doing that, again, they might not be a fit for the organization. It might come down to you having to explain to them, this is, this is the purpose of the organization. This is what we're here for. These are the objectives. Tell me what of these objectives you think align with what's important to you, if any. And if they can't name anything that aligns with them, then it might be that if they're a good person, if they have good work ethic, look within your organization. Don't let the person go away. Or help them exit gracefully if you can tell that they're really just not happy there. No, I think it's a great woman at hack. And I think that for some time, some leaders, I mean, you might have to actually consider like the company values. You know what right. I mean? Like what, what are they and what does the company stand for? I love what you said about the objectives piece, which is like, here is what 
what we look to accomplish as an organization, right? What of these things, you know, do you align with most from what from what you value? You know, what are these things that, that are most interested there? And again, I get it that, that sometimes you're going to have a mismatch, and sometimes you're going to have people that that you know that there there are none of those things, and they're just like, look, I, I just I like the, the type of work that I do. You know, and I'm not so much caught up into what that means. I think when that happens, though, that's where you end up with some elements of just mediocre work and just doing what they need to do to get the job done. And what we're really talking about in in the alignment of values is to get the best and the most out of people where they can bring their whole selves to work. They know that and they believe that what they are doing means something and and it's working towards something. And that's when I believe you get the best out of people and they feel the best about it when they go home. I, I totally agree with that. I'll say one last thing too. You know, we, we talk a lot about how part of our jobs as leaders, the, the L in culture is the lend air support. Sometimes if you're effective as a leader at lending air support, you end up sheltering your people from values of the organization that maybe aren't aligned with yours. Like maybe you're you're able to find ways of connecting your people through your own personal values as a leader, but you know that above you, the values aren't necessarily aligned with what you're doing and what you're asking the, your, your people to do. Make sure that you are candid with your people about that anytime you can. If you see people who are making noise about wanting to move up, they want to get promoted, they want to move ahead with the organization, don't set them up to be in a place where they they leave you, the blanket of you as the leader, and go, what the heck is this? I, I, I don't want to do any of this. Make sure that they are aware of what the politics and the culture and the values of the broader organization are, especially if they don't 100% align with yours as a leader. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And we'll talk to you all next time. 